Happy New Year's. All your YouTube subscribers, Happy New Year's to you from Phineas's Javelin and GRP Studios. Um, had a great time. Took the time off to just to get away from everything for a little while. There's so much going on in the news, and I know y'all have been keeping up with it. I hope that those of you that are of the household of faith are keeping up with it. There's some things that are taking place um, in the news. Uh, my wife has been bombarded, bombarding me with, with information, so much information. And um, since I took a, two, a couple of two or three days off, I'm kind of behind, but I'm going to catch up. I'm going to keep on going. You're going to be seeing this face. Um, 2021, here we are. Um, Jesus Christ is coming back. We don't know when, but until he does, the body of Christ, we need to be on our P's and cues. If you like what you hear, um, subscribe to Pastor David G. Grogan Sr. Uh, ring the bell. When you ring the bell, you'll be notified when my YouTubes are coming out. Looking forward to spending lots of time with you. Uh, I hope that things are going well with you already in this new year. Let's get right to it today. Uh, we, want, we want God. Uh, Trump issues a proclamation packed with power, powerful quotes on faith and freedom. This uh, was... Um, was a, a news article came out the 31st of December, 2021. Before I read the article, I'm going to say, I know that there are many of you out there that are Christians, uh, but you, and you hate Donald Trump. Uh, and you'll say, well, I don't hate him. I just don't like him. Um, well, you don't, you don't have to like him. You don't have to like him, but this is the, this is the issue that I have with many of uh, my brothers and sisters that are in the household of faith. And that's that, you know, you will demean this man and you will talk about how much of a racist and stuff that he is, but yet you will deny the very truths that about him and what he's doing for the, uh, for the, for the Christian body. I, I really respect um, Donald J. Trump. And I hope that within time, if you will take the time to be honest with yourself, pay attention to the news, just don't listen to everything that you're hearing anybody say, even myself, Dig into the news and find out for yourself what's really going on, not with just um, President Trump, but with the incoming um, President Biden and Kamala Harris, if they're inaugurated in, and the liberal uh, uh, Republican parties, all this. Listen to me, y'all. We are Christians first. Democrats, Republicans, black, white, brown, red, yellow, second. We are Christians first. And if you are a Christian and you are in the body of Christ, you have a responsibility to seek truth because Jesus Christ said, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I want to quote a scripture to you before we go into this year. And as we come into this 2021 year, rather remember neither you nor I have the ability to discern the heart of a man. Only God does. Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, verse nine and 10 says, for the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, know the heart. And I try the reins of the heart to repay every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. So before you lambast President Trump and say that you don't believe that he's a Christian, you don't believe that he uh, has a relationship with Jesus Christ, you need to make sure before you... Uh, Make that judgment call because neither you nor I know this man's heart. I know what I hear and I know his boldness to stand from the White House, from the White House and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. This article is proof positive. So I'm going to read this. It's not much, but I'm going to read it. It's got some very outstanding um, information in it. So let's go on. We want God, Trump issues. Uh, we want God. Trump issues a proclamation packed with powerful quotes on faith and freedom. I haven't heard anybody on the liberal side doing that. Nobody doing that as of yet. President Trump's been doing it on a regular basis, but you still say that you don't believe that he's saved. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what I believe. God knows. I know what I see. What about you? Finishes Javelin. This week, President Trump issued a proclamation that was filled with some profound quotes about faith and freedom. 
intended to reaffirm America's mission to end religious persecution worldwide in your communities too, y'all, in your neighborhoods, in your in your boroughs, in your in 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 the urban and rural settings. He's for Christianity. He's for religion. He's for you, the very ones that you will talk about him, hate on him, call him a racist, you know, voted against him because you'd rather have this other thing that you think. <laughs> You'll know, find out real quick. You get what you pay for. The proclamation was issued to mark the 850th anniversary of the martyrdom of St. Thomas Becker, a, a British priest and archbishop who was killed for his faith for standing up for religious liberty. President uh, Trump stated Thomas Becker's death serves as a powerful and timeless reminder to every American that our freedom from religious persecution is not a mere luxury or accident of history, but rather an essential element of our liberty. It is our priceless treasure and inheritance. It was brought with the blood of the martyrs. And I might just have to get up and go get this book Real quick, let me, let me, I'm going to pull around here, go to my library, get my book, because I want to show y'all something here real quick. Uh, y'all think I should have had this down um, when I uh, sat down. For those of you that don't understand, especially those of you that are in the body of Christ, you don't understand the liberties that have been bought for you from the blood of the saints of God, this book, see this right here? Fox's Book of Martyrs by John Fox. You need to get this book and read this book from beginning to end. Don't be so quick to dis dis discount and say you're not interested. If you are a Christian, listen, if you're not saved, I don't expect you to. If you're not saved, if you haven't been saved by the blood of the Lamb, if you have not given your life to Christ, I don't expect you to have any interest in this book. But if you are saved, you need to read this book because the very thing that um, this gentleman did, let me go back and get his name here real quick, Thomas Beckett's death serves as a powerful, timeless reminder to every American that our freedom from religion um, persecution is not a mere luxury or an accident of history, but rather a, an essential element of our li liberty. It is our priceless treasure and inheritance and is bought with the blood of martyrs. Now, you will sit up here and say that Donald J. Trump is not saved. You don't believe it. You know what? You're reprobate. If you, if you don't have the ability to look and see and listen to what this thing that this man is saying, and you'll even say, oh, he's just doing that to make it look like. You don't know his heart. Stop that, y'all. Stop that, Christians. Stop that. Give the man his due. Give the man his due. Let me go on. Here are some more, here are some more highlights from the president's, sta from the president's statement um, about faith and freedom. Quote, a society without religion cannot prosper. A nation without faith cannot endure because justice, goodness, and peace cannot prevail without the grace of God. Now you tell me this man is just acting. You tell me he's just saying things. No, no, you're wrong. You're in error. Quote, as Americans, we were first united by our belief that rebellion to a tyrant's is obedience to God and that defending liberty is more important than life itself. If we are to continue to be the land of the free, no government official, no governor, no bureaucrat, no judge, and no legislator must be allowed to decree what is orthodox in matters of religion or to require religious believers to violate their con consciences. This is Donald J. Trump saying these things, y'all. Quote, no rights, no right is more fundamental to a peaceful, prosperous, and virtuous society than the right of, uh, of than the right to follow one's religious convictions. As I declared in uh, Krasinski Square in Warsaw, Poland, on July 6, 2017, the people of America and the people of the world 
still cry out, we want God. And last but not least, quote, the honor Thomas Becker, to honor Thomas Becker's memory, the crimes against people of faith must stop. Prisoners of conscience must be released. Laws restricting freedom of religion and belief must be repealed. And the vulnerable, the defenseless, and the oppressed must be protected. The tyranny and murder that, sh that shocked the conscience of the Middle Ages must never be allowed to happen again. As long as Americans stand, we will always defend religious liberty. Now you tell me, uh, um, from myself to uh, President Donald J. J. Trump, I um, applaud you, sir. And I hope that one day, you know, you'll hear one of these YouTubes, even if it's down the line, that to let you know, you be of good cheer, Mr. President. You be of good cheer. If you want to read something um, and read on, you need to read this right here. Remarks by President Trump at Easter Blessing with Bishop Harry Jackson, this happened April 10th of this year, April 10th, 2020. You need to read that. That's good stuff. And you and you, and you will sit there, those of you that are the household of faith, and you will want to pass judgment on the president of the United States and say that you don't believe that this man is saved. This is the this is this is the this is the terrible thing about this, y'all, is that you haven't heard NBC, CBS, you know. ABC, CNN, MSNBC. You haven't heard anybody. All of the mainstream media that wants to keep you all tied up in knots, angry with the with the uh, conservative party, angry with Donald J. Trump. They are not going to give you this about the man that's been governing this country for the last almost four years. You're not going to hear this because they don't want you to. Because they want, they want you to remain blind. They want you to remain ignorant of the truth of the man that's leading this country. And I'm gonna tell you something. If this whole um, fraud election thing is allowed to continue on, if, it, if, if it's allowed to go past and, and, and um, Mr. Biden and Ms. Harris become the president and vice president of this country, I'm like this, you know what? For you liars and thieves and bandits and burglars and haters, you're gonna get what you pay for. Cause I guarantee you, by the time six months is up, by the time six months is up, you're going to be hoping, you will be wishing rather, that you had Mr. Trump back in office. He might be crass. He might not talk the way you talk. He might not be a, a, a regular old politician because this is what happens. People get used to stuff. Y'all have got used to want a regular old politician to tell you the same thing the politicians have been telling you for the last 40, 50 years. You don't care if they're black, white, or indifferent. But Mr. Trump has come in here. He has shaken up this whole thing. And now even blacks who have the sense to understand and listen and search for themselves and admit to themselves the truth will tell you that Mr. Trump is what we need for this country. Because I guarantee you, you think that racism, I was told by an uh, 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 older gentleman that things are worse now or as bad now as they were in the 50s and 60s. And yet you have all these commercials that come on TV with all these interracial couples, interracial kids and, and, and all over the country. You know, I was just watching a, a show about uh, engineering, about it's, it's, it's coming on, um, on Smithsonian Channel. They're talking about these buildings and how they've been built and how the builders and how did they build these things. Three of the four engineers on that TV, or that TV show are black, young blacks, professionals. And you're going to sit here and tell me that black people are still 400 years under the neck of the mean and hateful white man, you're in error. And those of you that are in the body of Christ who profess to love the Lord, profess to be Christians, and you will allow this lies and this deceit to run rampant in your mind, in your heart, and you will hate the people that are of your very own race because they disagree with you on policies that you know nothing about. Shame on you. Once again, unsaved people are going to do what unsaved people do. But those that are 
of the household of faith can't continue on. Can't continue on in your denial of the truth. With that said, I'm coming to an end on this one. Be back here shortly uh, for the uh, uh, another uh, segment. If you're not saved, receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Admit that you're a sinner. Ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and come into your life and be the Lord of your life all the remaining days of your life. And if you do that, if you make the confession, with, profess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose on the third day with all power, the word of God says you shall be saved. Verse number 13, Romans 10, 9 and 10. And verse number 13, verse number 13 says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, while there's yet a chance, your tomorrow is not promised to you. And for those of you that are already saved of the household of faith, if you are in error and you are judging without giving um, thought of who the just judge is, listen to what Mr. Trump is saying to the body of Christ. The body of Christ is not black, white, red. I mean, it's not just black or white or red. It's people, all of us that believe on Jesus Christ. Listen to what he said. Great words, Mr. Prunt, Mr. President. Thank you very much. With that said, Pastor David G. Grogan Sr., Senior Pastor at Soul Journal Life Ministries. I am the voice of Phineas's Javelin. Until we come back together on next time, God bless you and farewell.